There was something that I found a little disconcerting, and it has to do with football here in the state of Alabama. Alabama football released a video earlier today that voiced their support for Black Lives Matter really bothers me, but the thing that I think is most disappointing about it is it actually starts out pretty darn good. Like, I actually had no problems with it until, I don't know, like a minute and a half into the video, and so we'll go ahead and play that for you, and you can you can watch that and sort of make a decision for yourself, but I'm going to do a little commentary on this as we play. This was put out by Alabama. Um, we've got four blocks well, in Seattle that you just saw pictures of that is more like a block party. There we go. We are a team, black, white, brown. Together, we are a family. We are brothers. We represent ourselves, our families, our hometowns, our university, and our country. We stand on the shoulders of giants. Our grandparents yeah, so far, and so parents. Good. Our ancestors, our heroes, Alabama alumni, and former players who have changed the world. Beginning on our historic campus, we speak as one, acknowledging our history. Honoring their legacy and building a better, more just future. Okay, on the field, sure. we are relentless. We are strong. We are conquerors. But we are human beings first. And okay, in this yeah. moment in history, we can't be silent. We must speak up for our brothers and sisters, for our sons and daughters. We speak for justice for fairness, for equality, for greater understanding. We stand together against racism, against okay, brutality, against violence, for a better world. When we see our families, our neighbors, our classmates subjected to violence, we recognize the fear in their eyes. And when we experience racism, it hurts. In the game, we are one team, one heartbeat, one mission. Yet we are diverse. We don't always agree, but we learn so much from each other. And we are so much better together. Until I listen with an open heart and mind, I can't understand his experience and his pain. The virus has shown us how much we benefit from being together. And how much we need each other. We believe the solutions to our challenges are within us. We choose to listen. We choose to hear. And understand others' perspectives. Let's listen. Let's unite. Because our lives can't matter until black lives matter. Until black lives matter. Mm -hmm. Until black lives matter. Until black lives matter. Because our lives can't matter until black lives matter. Not true. But I had three major gripes with this video and, and the overall uh, tone and theme. Like I said, I actually agree with, I would say, at least 75, 80% of it. Most of that video, and we, we got to like a minute 20, a minute 30 before I even found anything I disagreed with. I agree with most of the sentiment underlying it. But some of the application and some of the conclusion of the video is absolutely absurd. And so here's my three major gripes. First of all, why does a football team feel the need to do this? This is one of the things that I've been baffled by since the very beginning. Now, I'm not one of the people like, I know that this is Laura Ingram's shtick. Um, I'm not one of the shut up and dribble people. I don't think that because you are a celebrity that you ought to just, you know, stay in your lane. And if you're a, a singer or an actor or whatever, you just need to shut up about politics. Now, I also have the right to not take you seriously because you, your opinion may not be that, all that informed. Like, frankly, I don't think that Taylor Swift has a whole lot of expertise on feminism or, or any subject matter in that realm just because she happens to be a very attractive woman that can sing very well and that has made her popular. Uh, nothing wrong with that. I just don't think that it necessarily means that I have to take her all that seriously. And, and based on the arguments that she's made, I think she's proven that she shouldn't be taken seriously. But nonetheless, nonetheless, I don't think that that is necessarily the case. But what I find odd about this is that this is the Alabama football program officially putting something together. They released it on their website. They put it out on Twitter. And, and this is them getting together, and I presume, based on how you know the production quality and value and the fact that all the team got together, that this is something that the athletic department sanctioned or gave the okay to, or, or however all of that worked. This is an official statement by them. Why do we feel as though we need every single person to come out now and tell us that they're not racist? Because first of all, it kind of begs the question, well, are we to assume that you were racist before? <laughs> 
this is the same thing with like Nickelodeon and I'm not even going to get into like the whole Paw Patrol thing because that's ridiculous and a whole other story on its own. But like Nickelodeon going off the air as a form of protest for the George Floyd thing, I'm like, it's a kid's network, which makes it even more ridiculous. But even if it wasn't a kid's network, why does a TV station feel the need to voice some kind of solidarity with the cause that they perceive, even if it's a cause that is correct? I don't understand why all these companies, because like virtually every company now has come out with some kind of statement in solidarity, which again, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be allowed to do that or that it's wrong for them to do that. I'm just saying I'm very, it's very questionable that they all feel the need that they must do this. And I think that the reason that that is, I, I think that you would find that if they were being honest about it, the reason that they all feel like they have to come out and they have to say something you even heard it in that video. Well, we, we can't be silent in a moment like this. Why do they feel that way? Because they're scared that people are going to come after them. And it again, it centers around this idea that I've been talking about for the past several days now. There is an assumption that you are racist unless you come out and prove that you are not. That is an absolutely ridiculous standard to hold. That every company, every organization, especially if you happen to be a white person, you have to come out and constantly declare your devotion to the cause, ergo, you're one of the bad people, you're one of the racists, you're the person that doesn't care if black people live or die. That's an absolutely absurd, illogical assumption to come to, but there's a lot of people on the left that have come to that and want to come down and, and rain down terror on people if they don't, and that's why a lot of these companies and a lot of organizations like the Alabama football team, it seems to me that that is part of the reason that they feel almost pressured to make goofy videos or statements like that, which are hilarious because they all sound exactly the same. Like every single uh, email that you get from a company that you use, any kind of diversity statement, whatever it is, they've all come out with these in the past couple of weeks and they've all sounded exactly the same. They always use the same buzzwords and everything. The second big gripe that I have with this video is there is an implication there that you should not say all lives matter. They're like, well, you can't say all lives matter until black lives matter. What's funny is in that same assertion, they basically uh, counteract their own argument. Because of course, the logic that they are playing off of is black lives or black people would be inclusive in the all. Well, if black people are inclusive in the all, then what's wrong with saying all lives matter? If you understand the principle that by saying all lives matter, you're saying black lives matter, you're just including everybody else in there as well, then why not just say all lives matter? Why do you feel the obligation to say specifically black lives matter if you understand that when someone says all lives matter, which I know some idiot people on the left will say is is a dog whistle and code for saying, okay, black lives really don't matter. It's like, you idiots do realize that black is included in the all, right? You, you know what the word all means? Do I need to define this for you? But if you understand that logic, if you understand that principle that all would be inclusive of black lives matter, then why not just say all lives matter? I mean, that was the mantra of the civil rights movement in the first place. Make everybody equal. Include everybody. That's the difference, and that's the reason that I disagree with so much, and I disagree with even the slogan of Black Lives Matter. I do think that there are good, well-intended people that use the slogan not realizing all the implications therein and not realizing that it is a multi-million dollar organization that funds Democrat presidential campaigns and other Democrat causes, specifically supports things like abortion and illegal immigration and homosexuality. Uh, in fact, a lot of people don't realize this, uh, Black Lives Matter was actually originally founded by a group of lesbians. And so I find that hilarious, too, that so many black people that I know are 100% against homosexuality because they've voiced that to me before will also support a cause like Black Lives Matter. I find that pretty hilarious. If you understand all of that, then once that ignorance is gone, there's really no excuse. You have a moral obligation to distance yourself from Black Lives Matter and using that as a brand if you do know that. And I'm willing to give people the benefit of the doubt as much as possible. But once you understand what they are and who they are, I don't understand why you can stand behind using that moniker. I don't understand how you could defend 
using that slogan unless you actually do agree with the things that they do and say. And so when it comes to this, it makes more sense to me. And this is, I, I have an All Lives Matter shirt. I use the hashtag All Lives Matter from time to time. Uh, why not go with All Lives Matter if you understand that underlying principle that the all would be inclusive of Black Lives Matter? Because again, they're trying to say, well, um, Black Lives Matter can't, uh, or All Lives Matter can't matter until Black Lives Matter. Well, yes, that is true. So if you are saying the phrase All Lives Matter, that would, of course, be inclusive of black lives. You just basically admitted that you understand that, so why not use that one instead? That one makes a lot more sense. It's far more inclusive. It's a lot less dividing. And it also doesn't share a name with an evil Marxist organization. Seems to me like that would be the slogan to run with. But anyway, the third big gripe that I have is that the University of Alabama is not just a company. It's not a private business. It's if it is owned by the state of Alabama then why is something that is an affiliate of the state of Alabama, something that is owned by the state, why are they coming out and giving a blatantly political statement like this, supporting an organization that gives money specifically to one side of the aisle, that gives money to Democrats, that supports Democrat causes? I mean, isn't there some kind of, and I, I'm asking this rhetorically, I know that there actually is, isn't there some kind of policy against that, openly supporting, like, I'm pretty sure that there would be people trying to, and, and frankly, I would agree with them if they did this, if uh, Auburn University, my own alma mater, came out tomorrow and was just saying, you know what, we support the National uh, Rifle Association, or we uh, believe that we are taxed enough already and did, the, you know, big, did a big statement with the TEA so that you could tell that it was for the Tea Party. I believe there would be some people a little bit upset about that and uh, would be justified in doing so. If they came out with a blatantly political statement like that, well, then there should be some repercussions. The problem that underlies this whole thing is that it's a feeling of you will be made to comply, you will be made to care. That's the problem that I have that is sort of the undertow in all of this. Because just like Alabama said in that video, it's like, well, we can't remain silent. And other companies, other corporations, other organizations have all been, I mean, just rushing to a microphone to tell you how not racist they are, which again is hysterical and, and based on a hilarious premise. Just like that, though, there is a feeling that you will be made to care, you will be made to comply, you must come forward and kiss the ring and seek forgiveness, and we still might not grant it to you anyway, but you have to do it or else we're coming after you. I mean, if you were to look, and this is what I find so hilarious about this since Antifa has been a part of this movement and, and all of this, there's nothing more fascistic than that. That you have to come forward and show your full and undying support to the cause or else you will be destroyed. I mean, that is a fascism in a microcosm. The way that they stamp out voices of discontent or disapproval is to make sure that they make it to where everybody to be able to operate must be on board with them. They must be part of the, the society. They must be part of the system. The reason that one political party rules in China and has for a long time and there is no real opposition is because that's exactly what they do. They make it to where you can't exist or function in society unless you pledge your undying love and support to the Communist Party there in China. And even though this is not happening through the government, we're seeing a similar thing unfold right here in America. That unless you're going to say the words Black Lives Matter, unless you come forward and kiss the ring, unless you bow before us, then you will be destroyed. You will be cast as one of the undesirables that must be gotten rid of. We will make it impossible for you to function in society. We may try to cause you to lose your job. We may try to cause you to... Uh, lose your business, your company, your livelihood, whatever it is, we're coming after you. And so many of these people are coming out and making these statements because they're trying to keep the mob from coming after them. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. 
You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.